So at this point, we've used Kodika, their, uh, their prototype editor, uh, to create an interface. And let me talk some more, a little bit more, uh, the pros and cons of, uh, of this tool. Um, we could, uh, this will only let us create one screen at a time. So let's say we focus on just creating the home screen, and we download our code. Then we clear out the screen and create the about screen and download it. And then we clear it out and create every screen. We could do that. The reason we're not going to do that is because every time we click download, it downloads an HTML file. So we would have home HTML and, a, and computers HTML and art HTML. And that's perfectly fine. That's a web page. But actually, we want to have all of our screens in one HTML file. We want to have the home screen, the computer screen, the art screen in one file. The reason is jQuery Mobile will give us more access uh, to, our, to, to its capabilities if it's all in one file. Something as simple as this. Notice in my example, when I go from screen to screen, this animation cannot happen if it goes from HTML file to HTML file. All of these pages are within this one index file, and therefore jQuery Mobile can use JavaScript and CSS to animate this, but only because these screens are in one file. And we see the difference when we go here, that pop-up also. I cannot do that pop-up with that animation, with those features, unless it's in the file. The, the part where that breaks is the directions. That one, watch here, I'm looking at the top here, index.html file. When I go to directions, no animation, and it takes me to dir html. So if we separate each screen into different HTML files, we lose those animations and other features of jQuery Mobile. Sometimes we'll have to, like this. We could have put this all in the same one file, but it's a little easier to keep it separate in this case. And when I press back, no animation, it just exists. Whereas everything else gives me an animation. If you don't care about those animations, that's fine. There's other features of jQuery Mobile that break if you go from page to page as well. I'll talk about them as time goes on, but that's why we, we want to stay with one file. What was downloaded, when you click the download button, go to your desktop and you should see, or wherever your files download, maybe the download screen, mine went to the desktop, you should see something called Kodika app with a number, dot zip. Uh, let's see, where is it? Right there. So what's inside of that are the components that make our project work. We're technically done with Kodika. We don't have to pay the $79. Um, the reason you would be paying that is to be able to save your work, have collaborators, have access to the newest features. But I'm going to minimize the web browser. I don't need Kodika anymore. We're going to work with what was downloaded this zip file. So go to your desktop where it downloaded and you want to select, you want to, you want to right click it and select extract all. We want to unzip, we want to extract the files from this zip folder into a regular folder or else we can't work with them. So find that zip file and right click extract all. Select to extract, and now it pops up like this. I've got the Kodika app folder. Notice it does not have the zipper. This is fully functional now. This was compacted. We couldn't work with it. It's, it's unzipped now, and inside of that we've got the mobile project. That's what we want. Right, it says mobile website. And if you open a mobile website, these are the files that Kodika gives us. These are what we didn't have access to from their demo version. Okay. 
so let's um, when you see your index HTML file that's what that's where all of your widgets exist and this is where all of our screens will exist the home the art the PC even down here the about and everything except for the map we'll work with that later on your index file go ahead and right click edit with notepad plus plus not edit Edit with Notepad++. Plus plus. Okay. All right, so we're going to edit our index file. So right-click Edit Notepad, and here we go. Now we've got something familiar to work with. If you get the pop-up about updating, just can cancel that. And so here's all of the code, the head and the HTML and the doc type and everything. So we need to do a few things before we can get really to work. Uh, the first thing I want to do is upgrade our code because notice on lines 12, 18, 19, and 22, we've got references to online resources, line 12, has a reference over to jQuery version 1.3.1, whereas the newer one is 1.4.2. Uh, but I want to confirm, actually. Yes, but I believe we also need to change, make sure the path is different. This is going over to cloudfront.net, which should work, but I want the address to the official jQuery link. So what I would do is uh, we go over to jQuerymobile.com. So you're going to need to copy and paste this. Let's go to jQuerymobile.com and go to latest stable on the right side. Actually, let me see, somewhere here will give us the CDN version. Custom download. Yes. No, uh, I want to just get the code for the link. Now, I know I saw it here. Yeah, but I'm sure that there was a link. remember the Wikipedia version had the code we wanted so we can do it that way um, I'm, I'm gonna go back to Wikipedia let's go to Wikipedia and open up the jQuery mobile article and that's the code I want yeah, but I'm going to assume that we just changed that to, to a 3. And there it is. So a um, little bit of a roundabout thing we need to do here. Obviously, we just need to do it once, and then it'll work. We need to link over to the latest versions of the code, uh, and it's probably somewhere in the jQuery mobile website. But uh, we can get it from, from uh, Wikipedia, like we did last week. So go over to Wikipedia and copy the line. Uh, or copy the code inside of the href 
this HTTP part. So where you've got link rel style sheet href, copy the, the link inside of the quotes inside of href. And that's going to replace our line 12. There's a link rel style sheet, and there's that address, which is going to version 1.3. So re replace that with what you're getting from Wikipedia. So take a moment to do that then. Copy those links from Wikipedia to your file. The uh, line 12, we'll start with line 12. Yes? How to get to the site to get that file? What line? Wikipedia. Uh, That's right, jQuery Mobile. And we'll set this to 1.4.3. So we'll do them one at a time. Make sure your line 12, make sure your line 12 is set to 143. Yeah, we'll do those in a moment. The second place is on line 19. Yeah. And then the next line is line 18 oh. and 19. So line 18 and 19 need to be updated as well based on the Wikipedia article. Line 19 is pointing to jQuery 1.9.1, whereas Wikipedia has 1.10.2. So I'm going to copy that from the Wikipedia article down there where it says script and I'll replace line 18, the, the SRC portion. And then the next line is number 20. I'm sorry, 18 and then 19. So the Wiki Wikipedia article needs to be updated because it's still saying 140. That should be 143. So let's take a moment to fix those lines, 12, 18, and 19, and then we'll go on in a moment. Save your work. To see if it's working, run the file, remember? See how it looks like in Firefox, and if it looks totally weird, you might have misspelled something. If it looks good, then you're fine. 
So let's take a quick moment here to finish that. If you need a little help, call me over, but we're ready to go in 30 seconds. So now, just like you did here, if you change it to a three, you can do that to the end. And then you need to change both of those threes on the next slide.
All right, everyone. So again, you just need to do this one time. Uh, Kodika gives you a lot of things right out of the box, but not everything. The version, especially that we're using, a free one, is needs to be updated. We've got another thing we need to change here, line 22. That one is pointing over to something called kodika.ext.js. That's linking back to Kodika for some reason. I don't know why. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it because if you notice, in the folder of what we downloaded, we have an index file, Kodika ext.js and Kodika ext.css. This is where we're going to write our custom code. When we get to the point of customizing the interface so that it's got a pink background, I'm going to write my CSS in that file. And when I get to the part about writing some unique phone gap JavaScript code, I'm going to write it in that file. So that means we need to fix line 22 not to point over to the online version of Kodika EXT, but to point to the one in our folder. So line 22, you're going to change what's in the source. You're going to delete what's there except for the part that says kodika.ext.js. So remove that web address part except for the end of it, kodika.ext.js. And that could be any file name as long as it matches the file name in your folder. Yes. So if you didn't want to use the word Kodika. It could be my JS. That would work. So actually lines 15 and 22 are sort of related. 15 is correct. 15 is saying link to the style sheet in the folder. And now 22 also says link to the JavaScript file in the folder. Those two files in my folder are called kodika.ext.js, so that's what my code looks like. Line 22. To make sure this is all working, I'm going to save my work and then run launch Firefox. If this is working, if you didn't misspell anything, then your result should look something like that. We've upgraded it to the 143 code, so it's got the more modern, sleek, and shiny, or uh, the sleek version, the flat design version of it. If I click these things, nothing really happens, but they highlight. I can open the section headers. The divider has a button, but it doesn't do anything. <coughs> Notice we put a grid in there, but it's invisible, because there's nothing in the grid, but it's in the code. So this is my starting point. Question? What you want to do is you want to make sure that your code is correct here. One of the things that you want to do, what you want to do is check that you wrote here 143 here and here. Here and here. And then also here and here. All right, so this is my project so far. What should it look like? All right, so there's my project. What I need to do now is fill in a little bit more of these details now that I've actually managed to download it and I can work on it in, uh, in Notepad. So this is where I would go in and add my header, my appropriate header text and my button names and such. I didn't take a moment to do that on the Kodika editor because, again, I could accidentally delete it all by going to another screen. We'll do that in a moment, but let's look at what, what we've got so far here. Uh, I don't know why there's this big empty space here. I'm going to delete some of these between lines 9 and 12. I'm just going to cut these out here like that. And so this should look familiar. We, we did this before. 
There's the doc type as always, it's HTML5, the head. This is different, we didn't do this previously. Line 4 has meta car set UTF-8, or char set, if you want to say it wrong. Car set UTF-8. Uh, this shows that we are accessing a basically a library of possible um, languages and alphabets. Um, if we want to write words in English, we're able to do so, no problem. If we want to write words in Spanish that have accent symbols, we can do that. If we want to write Cyrillic letters, so Russian letters, Hebrew letters, we can write a variety of types of letters in the alphabet because of this line here. Uh, we've uh, we've expanded the ability, the capabilities of the of being it, of it being a multilingual app with that line. We didn't do that last time. Another one that we didn't do is line five, where we've got meta name viewport. Now here's the thing. This will make more sense when it actually becomes an app. But when you when you use an app, um, you don't have the behavior of being able to pinch and zoom into it, do you? You do if, you've on a, if you're on a website. If you visit a website on your mobile and it's too small, you can zoom in, right? But on a mobile device, these are usually set up that it looks perfect on the device. No need to zoom in, zoom out. That's what this line here is saying. Meta name viewport. The viewport is basically your screen. The, uh, the, the attributes of that are that the initial scale is 1, or 100%. Zoom my document 100% to fill up the screen. User scalable, no. Don't let people zoom in and out, like a web page. So these two, th these two properties of this meta tag make it right away feel much more like an actual app. There's other properties we'll add to content a little later, but this is enough of what we need at this point. Then we've got number six and seven. These two, we're going to remove them later. We'll leave them here for the moment. These two meta tags deal specifically with Apple mobile devices. Uh, this is set up that if a person visit, visits your app on an Apple device and saves the 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 the, uh, the web page to their home screen, it can um, behave a little bit more like a real app. But that's only for iPhone people, not for Android people. We're going to leave it for the moment because the end of this class will give us a result that is a web, a little web page, a mobile web page. When we get to the Android version, we're going to remove that. It won't make sense. So, but uh, that's just uh, Apple specific stuff. Wouldn't it be ignored for other devices? It would be ignored, yeah. So we could leave it in and it'll be ignored, but I want to save all those uh, 64 bytes there. So we've got title, which was not filled in for us. And title is important uh, on a web page, but when we get to the part of it being a native app, it will be ignored. So we can either fill it in or not. And actually, if we do test it, uh, it's grabbing by default, it grabs the text that it sees on the very first uh, header. So notice, we did not write title, but it's automatically, the web browser is getting the text found under header. So we can fill that in or not. I'm going to leave it empty for the moment. Line 8. And we talked about what line 10 can do. It connects to the jQuery mobile CSS file to give us the styling, these colors and gradients and etc. Our own uh, custom CSS code will live in the Codica EXT file on line 13. Line 16 and 17 are the JavaScript files that make the interactivity work, like this drop-down effect and animations and transitions and such. And then line 20 has our custom code. And notice the order that these are in. It was asked last time, and I'll reiterate it this time. It is important to put these in the order listed here. CSS file, jQuery file, uh, jQuery uh, JS file, jQuery mobile JS file, and then our own custom code, because it overrides. The next one overrides the previous one. 
then the head ends, the body begins, and then a section. Notice there were comments for us. Head home starts here. Line 25, we've got the data roll of page, which we saw previously, ID page 1. Let's change that. I don't like it that it's called page 1. I want it to be called home. So change line 25 to say ID home. And then the whole first home page is visible here all the way down to the bottom. And then the document ends, body, and, eight, and slash HTML. In my case, 100 lines. If yours is more or less, don't worry. Back on line 26, we've got a div of data role header, and that's where the header is appearing. We're going to change that as our example. The home screen is going to say the name of the college, San Diego Continuing. Actually, since eventually it's going to be an app, this is the name that's going to be up here at the top, right? So we'll call this line 28, we'll call it my SDCE. So find line 28, where you've got a heading, which we should change in a moment, H3, up on the header. Remember when we did the work last week, I had said about a hierarchy of elements on the screen, right? Um, top to bottom, the header, we want that to be as an H1. The content, the possible header headings inside of content will be H2 and 3, and then the footer will be H4. So we're going to take a moment to edit that. I want here H1 slash H1. Line 27 and 29. We didn't get to this manually last time to create a nav bar. Notice the example up here. Nav bar to go from screen to screen, but we'll see what Kodika wrote for us. A nav bar is basically from line 30 to 49. It's another div. We see divs over and over. But it gets upgraded into something more modern with a data role. And in this case, data role nav bar. No space in the word nav bar, no uppercases, it's nav bar. So we didn't see that one before, but to create a nav bar, we wrap a div around a list of bullet points, actually. UL is a collection of bullet points. How does that even make sense? Well, UL stands for unordered list. If you have an ordered list, that means step one, step two, step three. You need to do step one before you get to step three. Unordered list is bullet points. It's just dots, bullet points. So plain old ULs, which were invented at least 20 years ago, whenever you used UL, it was a bullet point list. But then by adding div data roll nav bar, then it makes it each it makes each bullet point horizontal, evenly spaced, with a little divider in between, and it turns it into a nav bar. So this is a bullet point list, home, art, computers. And each bullet point is a list item. So the whole, so the three bullet points is a UL, unordered list, and each bullet point is a list item, and there's the button, button one, button two, button three. Which actually should be on line 35, home. The first button is the home button. The second button, line 40, will be the art classes button. We'll just call it art. And the third button, line 45, is computers.
So notice these have the A tag. We've seen those. A tags are anchor links. Our button, computer's button, they're all links. Notice they point over href, pound, page one, pound, page one. They want to link to a different screen, but those screens don't exist yet. But what we'll do is we'll set the button for the home. We'll set the link for the home button to say pound home, lowercase. doesn't exist yet, but the art button, what should we link that to? Power art. Pound art, lowercase. And then computers, pound computers. Now be careful here, if you call that pound computer, and later on we create the page and call it ID equals computers, it won't work. So this will link exactly to what you name it, we haven't created those pages yet, so these links will go nowhere. But we'll get to that. Question? What is that class equals? Uh... Great point. Notice the home button has something the others don't. Class equals blah, blah, blah. That's visible when yeah. you run it. That's the button that is active, the blue one. The other ones are not blue. I haven't clicked them yet. So if I want a button to look like it's been clicked, I give it this line here, class equals UI button active, space UI state persist. We'll make that happen for the art button when we're in the art screen. So this will make more sense when we create an art screen. We want the art button to be highlighted when we're on the art screen, so we'll put that there, but not yet. Yes. Does that mean that you're going to have a, a repetition of the nav bar on each screen? Yes, actually. Um, each screen full, the way we're going to do it here, will have its own nav bar. There's ways to do it so that you have a persistent nav bar. You define it one time and it's visible on all pages. That's still a little bit experimental on the latest version of jQuery Mobile. So we'll have to do it this way. Yes. Is there any way to make the nav bar vertical versus horizontal? There should be. Uh, I'd have to look it up, but I'm sure if we find it over on jQueryMobile.com, we browse around and we can probably get a sidebar like this. We can also do something where you, uh, we can even animate it. You, you click it and it'll open up from the side. But it, we'll have to look at, we'll have to look it up to see exactly how to do it. The default is a, is a top horizontal bar. Yes. Um. When I downloaded the HTML from the code, code mm -hmm. um, it put the, some of the parameters on these tags in a different order. I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, when something, when so, when the order of something matters, I'll I'll mention it. But uh, if it downloaded and it worked, then you're fine. All right, so um, we're still in the header section, and then the header section ends right here. This is where it's gonna, you're going to need to get practice uh, figuring out where you're at in the code, and this is how uh, phone, uh, this is how Notepad++ is very helpful because, for example, if you click on the slash div on line 50, it'll highlight its opening div. So when you get to this point and you're just browsing code, and I've got two slash divs, what what does that even mean? Well. They've got a little line that connects to the previous one, but also if you click on it, it should highlight, so you can orient yourselves. What you could do uh, is uh, get used to clicking on those tags to find the pair, and that's usually how I help troubleshoot people. Something doesn't work, something looks weird, I go to you and I say, well, let's look at your pairs of tags. Oops, that one doesn't have a pair because it's missing a, it's missing a slash. Notice how it doesn't highlight. If I click here, that highlights, that's a pair. If I click here, doesn't highlight because it's missing the slash. But anyway, this slash div here ends the header, and then we get into the content, div data role content. And that's the rest of the visible part of the main interface. Um, there's our h2, that looks good, heading. Um, 
We'll just write a welcome here on line 53. Line 55 to 57 uh, has our picture um, placeholder, but actually gives us something pretty dumb. It puts a div around the picture with some weird styling. When we put our own picture, people often see that their picture goes outside of this box because that's what line 55 is doing. It's creating a width and a height and then putting a background color and a border, one pixel. And then when we put our own picture, it doesn't quite fit into the box and it looks weird. So I'm going to remove the div that is wrapped around this picture. So line 55 and 57 we need to remove. Line 57 closes the div, line 55 opens it. If you triple click a line, it selects the whole line and you can delete. Double click selects a tag, triple click selects a line. And I just left the image tag. And of course we'll put a cool picture a little later. Line 58 begins the collapsible set. That's the one that you tap to open. For more content, it's got a div, data role, collapsible, dash, set. If it's more than one word, oftentimes there's a dash between the words. Collapsible set. Collapsible dash set. So again, the humble div, which is a plain old empty container, upgraded with a data role of collapsible set. And each particular element in the collapsible set is another div with a data role of collapsible. And then the content that we want inside, section headers. So it should be a separate Content? It is. It's up here, data role content. But continuing on into the collapsible set. It should go past it. Div, data role, content should go all the way to the very end where the, the whole screen full of content ends. Uh, so we've got a, a, a chicken or the egg sort of thing here. Remember, we put in all of the pieces that we might work with. And I know from my example, this collapsible set is going to make sense in the art screen. So we can either fill in the contents of the collapsible element on the home screen and then put it in the art screen eventually or put it in the art screen now. But we don't have an art screen. So we're gonna create an art screen and then a computer screen and put this content where appropriate. Before that actually. I then also want to deal with the copyright, the footer. So let's, uh, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to the collapsible set in a moment. Don't, don't bother with it just yet. Again, we'll come back to this list view element, which we'll look at in detail. We'll come back to that. Oh, there's the grid that we made, which is invisible. Skip that for the moment. And then somewhere in around line 92, you should see data roll footer. There's a footer. We'll set that to H4, and then copyright. 2014. So line 93 should be changed to H4, and then uh, we'll write copyright 2014. Did we talk previously about making special characters? So I want to make the copyright symbol. Uh, over at w3schools.com, there's a list of all possible symbols. Copyright symbol, trademark symbol, trade uh, yen symbol, etc. And I know because I use it a lot that the copyright symbol is written with the code, the ampersand, which is shift 7, copy, semicolon, no spaces here. 
ampersand, copy, semicolon. It should italicize, if you save it and run it, that converts it into the copyright symbol. <coughs> There's a bunch of these symbols. Yen, for example. You want the yen symbol? It's, it's ampersand, yen, semicolon. So save it and run it in Firefox. And so and copy semicolon becomes the symbol. If you want the full list of all possible symbols, there's hundreds of them, thousands of them, you go back to w3schools.com, like I said last week, and you go in there to the HTML character entities, and they're all listed. So if you need to write something in Spanish, let's say we need to write... Uh, you know, ole, and there's an accent mark on the e. We write the correct character entity, and that'll make a little accent mark on the e. If you need the the little squiggle above the n for the enya, there's a code for that. If you need to write the the little o with the, the slash across it, there's a there's a symbol, there's a code for that. If you need to write the, the U with two dots, there's a code for that. If you need to write the little C with a little hook below it, there's a code for that. Question? You, you never put the footer in, the, the footer widget in, so if you wait a little bit later, we'll, we'll put it in. All right, so what, what we've done at this point is we've standardized some elements of the design. The header, nav bar, the heading, and the footer. There's going to be other content on the home screen, but at this point, I, then, I now want to create an art screen and move this <coughs> element which was made for the art screen into the art screen. Then I want to create a computer's screen and move this element, which was made for computers, into the computer screen. So what we'll do is a little bit of uh, copy and paste. Because what we've got here should pretty much look like this. If it doesn't, again, I'll give you my code. We'll do a break soon, and I'll help you out. But I want to now make these other screen folds. So I'm going to copy the code up here. I want to copy the code from line uh, 25, where the data roll page starts, down to slash div line 50 before the content starts. So we're going to copy the pre-made nav bar. I don't want to rewrite it. I might make a mistake. I know it works, so I'm going to copy it. Uh, so line 25 to 50, copy that, and then we'll go all the way to the end of the document you should see slash div, slash body, slash HTML. You want a new space above slash body. Couple spaces. Make yourself some new space right above slash body after slash div at about line 99. And this is where we'll paste. This started the div of data roll page, etc., etc. We need another closing div. <coughs> so 
So this closing div closes the header. This closing div closes the nav bar. And this one that I just wrote closes the whole page. We didn't copy that from the previous page, did we? And to make sure it's working, remember, click on a tag. If I click on that tab, it should take me back to that line that I copied. So we've got a brand new page. We've, we've just invented a new page which needs a unique ID. This one copied the existing home ID, so there's a conflict. Go back to line 99 where we pasted this new page to this art page and change ID to art. Because that's what our button expects here. If you link to art, if you click on art, it should link to a page with an ID of art. All right, so I've got uh, I've got the div for the whole page. Uh, I copied in the header, which we'll edit in a moment. But I'm missing the content and the footer. I'm not going to copy the content because it would copy too much content. I'm going to get a little practice and write a div for content, and then we'll copy the footer. So we'll go to the place. The slash div ends the whole page. This slash div ends the header. So we'll make a new div pair here. So we need div slash div, and then data role content. Because the content page will change, uh, the content section will change from screen to screen. This is all that I really need for the moment. But now, I, next, I need uh, the footer to wrap it up because I'm going to have the same footer on all three pages. So on that one, I will copy and paste. It won't change. So I'm going to go back to where I've got footer on my home page, home screen, which is line 92 to 96, and I'll copy it as is. All right, so line 92 to 96, copy that. And after the div of content, but before the whole page div ends, you need an enter there. Question? So like the nav, you're repeating the, uh, the footer on each, uh, on each page. That's right. Each screen full needs its own nah, uh, its own uh, footer. Copy and paste. Can you move that into the CSS? Uh, not quite, because the CSS would be um, controlling its styling, not really its um, its existence. So uh, there's other ways that we could do it, more complicated ways, where perhaps we use some uh, uh, JavaScript to make it appear. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think someone needs to turn off their alarm. All right, so this is our footer. If we save this, we've saved ourselves some effort, right? We don't have to write to rewrite the footer, but if we wanted to, we could. Div, data role, footer, etc. We've got a footer. 
Now, finally, here's the, here's the chicken or the egg thing. Well, I, I had the content for my uh, art screen, but I didn't have an art screen. Now I made an art screen. So I'm going to cut and paste. I'm going to move the collapsible element into the content area of the art page, save it and run it, test it, see if it's working, and then, and then we'll go forward. So that means... That means we're going to go back to our home screen, and in a moment we'll copy all of this. Uh, actually, cut, <coughs> not copy, cut, so that we can move it. Question? Uh, my temptation at this point would be that we've made a template for our art page, and what we have there is pretty close to what we would want for the computer's page. That maybe it'd be good to copy that now and have two structures to work with, and then just put the uh, content material in it. The, uh, yep, that's a very good point. This uh, this is an example of, of that idea of what I said about planning ahead. We could, at this point, continue to fill in the content of the art page, but then we're going to have to do this again for the computer's screen. So this is enough of a template, isn't it, to do the computer's screen. So maybe it's a good idea to do that. We could go in and we could copy the content and put it in and then redo it later, but you know, that might save us some effort actually, so uh, we, we should do that. We should copy over this content, but actually before that, we don't know if this fully works. I want to save it and run it in Firefox, and if it seems to be working, then I'll copy it over. So I'm going to save this and run it in Firefox. I haven't copied the collapsible element yet. So this is my home screen. I click on Art. I guess I'm on my art screen. There's nothing really that tells me I'm on my art screen yet because I haven't edited anything. But if you look on the address bar, that's how you can tell. Index.html, pound art. It went to the right section because remember, this is all one long HTML file. And with the button click, we've jumped to a different visible part of the HTML document. And I guess if we're in art screen, I would love for this to highlight that we're in art. That's what that class was about. We'll do that. But if I click on home, it should go back to home. So art and home. Kind of work. Still needs effort. So the point is, if our art screen seems to be kind of working, then what we could do is copy it and paste it over to make a uh, computer screen. And that might, be, that might save us some effort, so I think we'll do that. Uh, thanks for the suggestion. Uh, what we'll do is this whole section, 99 to 132, which encompasses a whole screen, a whole page full of content, we can copy that and paste it at the end. That's what I'll do. I'm going to select to copy all of this <coughs> from div to slash div. Paste. And then very important, now on my newly made data roll page, line 134, ID. That needs the ID of, what did we call it again? Computers, plural. Computers. You could test this also. This is the home screen. This is the art screen, and I can tell by the address. Computers, computer screen. All right, so uh, let, let's do uh, our last break, 10 minutes, so that if you need to catch up, we can do that. Just 10 quick minutes. What you want to do is make sure you've got these screens, and if you want to get a little ahead, what I'm going to do after the break 
is I'm going to move these. So you want to cut. You want to cut this from here to art, and then this divider cut it from here to computers. Let's take ten minutes. It's eight twenty-two. We're back at eight thirty-two.